Oh, sorry. Um, members of the committee, my name is Kelly Sedoric. That's Kelly with an I E S I E D O R C K. And I'm an attorney with the Alliance Defending Freedom, where I hold the title of the Eastern Council. Alliance Defending Freedom is a national legal alliance. We litigate cases around the country and inter internationally on the issues of sanctity of life, um, marriage and family, and religious freedom. Today I'm pleased to be before this committee to speak on the legal impact that this bill, LB 45, will have on Nebraska citizens' First Amendment rights if it is enacted. Our country has a long-standing tradition of respect and tolerance for the viewpoints of all Americans. Yet this bill fails to protect the First Amendment freedom Instead, it seeks to confine religious freedom in particular to the four walls of a church or a place of worship. But the Constitution of both the U.S. and Nebraska apply to everyone at all times. It protects the free exercise of religion, which means you don't leave your conscience and your faith at home when you go out to work. Indeed, Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court and other federal courts have held multiple times that businesses have the same First Amendment rights as individuals. But this bill is enacted would give many of your constituents a choice no one should ever have to face, either violate their conscience or face legal action, fines, even jail time. Let me give just a couple examples of the legal impact this bill would have. This bill exposes businesses to liability for making decisions based on something as simple as spousal benefits. LB 45 could force individuals or organizations in violation of their sincerely held religious beliefs to extend the same employment benefits to their employees same sex partners they give to married spouses of the opposite sex. LB 45 fails to extend constitutionally required protections to Nebraska citizens to be able to communicate and to promote one's business in accordance with one's beliefs. For example, a family owned religious bookstore that advertises its employment opportunities to those living a lifestyle consistent with their beliefs would face substantial penalties. The same would be true of a religious photographer. Um, or a Jewish counselor who advertises for, for similar purposes. LB 45 would also penalize employers who seek to hire employees who share their vision or, vision or mission. But as I'm sure many of you know, for any organization to be successful in its purpose and in its mission, it must be allowed to employ individuals committed to its purpose, employees that possess certain skills, attributes, et cetera, which further the, the mission of that, of that employer or the business. This coercion that would happen by LB 45 would be grossly disruptive and destabilizing to these organizations. And um, yes. um, so in conclusion, in conclusion, passage of this bill would affirm discrimination against Nebraskan businesses and individuals who hold sincere religious beliefs about marriage, about sexuality. Most troublesome of all, by enacting the proposed law, the government would be complicit in and indeed a direct cause of the opposite of religious freedom, which is religious coercion. Respect and toleration of all viewpoints drove the foundations of this country, and we should not, with all due respect, go forward with any legislation that fails to protect the First Amendment rights of every Nebraskan citizen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Christensen has a question for you. Would you describe some of the additional unintended consequences or additional burdens that you see on business owners and employees? You mentioned on the religious side, is there others that you would have to share? Well, we've seen across the country where bills such as the one that's before us today have had a negative impact on, on people of faith and have prevented people of faith from living their, their lives and living and running their businesses according to the dictates of their conscience. Um, and we're living in several cases right now, there's a case in, in New Mexico where there's a young Christian photographer who photographs um, and she's willing, willing to photograph gays and lesbians. It's not an issue so much where it comes to, um, in that particular case, their case of sexual orientation, but she doesn't want to affirm a message and, and, fill, and photograph their, their commitment ceremony. But she's being dis, um, sued under New Mexico's non-discrimination law, and she was actually, she's already been fined $6,600 by the New Mexico Human Rights Commission um, and, and penalized for doing something, nothing more than what the Constitution protects, which is to live your lives and run your business according to the dictates of your conscience. So this is just one of, of many, many examples. Isn't there another example of a baker that's been in the news that got that's that's right. being sued that's by right. $50,000 plus just because they didn't want to make a case and now we are forcing people to perform for people they don't want? That's right, taking place in Colorado and you know there was a counselor in Georgia 
um, and she didn't want to counsel uh, this couple, and she referred this couple. They received um, attention in 10 minutes, so clearly their, their needs were being met. In fact, they later gave that counselor um, an exemplary recommendation. But they later came back and sued this, this, this counselor um, because of her race-based nomination, sued her for discrimination, and she was terminated from her employment for, again, doing nothing more than you know, following what her religion told her, following her conscience, which is a constitutionally protected right, and something the Supreme Court has upheld as, as something that needs, needs to be protected. And, and another area we're seeing is, is in adoption and child and faith-based adoption agencies. Um, there's been another difficult problem where these faith-based organizations only want to see their children placed with the both a mom and a dad. They see that as in the best interest of their child, and they're being persecuted, even forced out of the marketplace. That's happened in Massachusetts and in Illinois and in Washington, D.C. as well. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thanks a lot. Thank you.